I know it's only been two weeks, but kind of picking up where he left off in the 2023 season. What do you got for us? Yeah, this this guy has just made me so happy because I have so many shares and I've been so excited about Nico Collins all off season. I, I was looking at him at wide receiver 15, wide receiver 17 in people's rankings. I've had him in my top 12 for months and months now. Um, before, even after the Stephon Diggs trade, I, I've been on Nico Collins for a long time. Mike, you also have been. You were talking about trading for him last offseason before he even broke out. That is um, true. So we've been big Nico Collins fans here, and I'm so glad to see that everyone's catching up. Um, he is now firmly in that top 12 on keep trade cut. He is wide receiver seven right now. And that is where he belongs because he is that good of a wide receiver. He is one of the best wide receivers in the league right now um, with the stats that he's putting up and just not just the volume that he's getting because like, it's not like he's with a bunch of other, you know, crap wide receivers. He's got Stefan Diggs and Tank Dell out there. And he's still dominating targets, still dominating yards, he's finding the end zone. He is CJ Stroud's number one guy. It's going to continue that way his ability to create yards after the catch. I can just go on and on about how good Nico Collins is. But we're here to talk about trade values and what we're looking for if we're trying to trade away this guy, trade for this guy. What are we doing with Nico Collins? So, Mike, I found three trades from okay. Dynasty Daddy um, that I either stole completely from Dynasty Daddy or I kind of modified a little bit to get a good trade value. I want us to go over these three trades. You know, Would you make this trade? If not, is there something close that you would be able to modify it to to make it worth it for you and if not hey we're not going to do this trade this will help us find the trade value for these players uh so the first one we got for nico collins puka nakua and a third round pick I remember it yeah, goes out i would and here's why i just got an update three days ago from yahoo sports ram star wide receiver puka nakua could reportedly miss five to seven weeks with a pcl strain um there's a possibility that i know that where you drafted puka he was probably a throw in or a not thought of player in your draft but you may have restructured your team around him so if you're moving on from what could be a wide receiver one you know you're getting a wide receiver one you're only adding a third round pick on mm -hmm. top of that i will say that i would do that i would as well i mean I'm, I'm a huge puka fan but hey he's out right now unfortunately i think we're making a lateral move uh as you know to nico collins these guys are some of the best wide receivers in the league right now and still young with plenty of potential uh moving forward to continue to produce so next trade i got here for you mike kyron williams and a second round pick for nico collins it's a little harder for me. I like Kyron Williams, you know, even though I did say previously that I would move on from him. But now we're in season. Kyron Williams getting points. I don't like adding the second on it. Feels like a lot. I probably okay. wouldn't. What do you think? I would do this trade. You know, okay. I'm I'm a notorious Kyron Williams hater, unfortunately. Um, but even with that, this Rams offense is so injured right now. I don't know if anyone's going to be producing at a high level. I mean, Kyron Williams is a good player. But without the wide receivers out there, that's, that box is going to be stacked for every single time he runs the ball. I think that's going to affect his efficiency. Uh, so we'll see how this goes, especially if the Rams got behind. We saw it this past weekend where Kyron Williams didn't actually have uh, that many carries. I believe he had 12 carries because they got behind early. So I would move Kyron Williams in a second to go get Nico Collins. Looking back at it, maybe I would. 30 carries for 75 yards. Does have two touchdowns. Nate, what do you got for the last one? All right, last trade here. This one's probably the hardest one. Roma mm. Dunze and a first-round pick or Nico Collins. Well, it's tough because, like I always say, when you buy a wide receiver or a tight end, for that matter, you're buying the quarterback. So right now, who do we trust more, C.J. Stroud or um, Caleb Williams? And it's C.J. Stroud. But that being said, Roma Dunze and a first, this is a guy who's a top-five draft pick. So basically – do you value Nico Collins as a top five rookie selection? I'm not saying I don't, but to put that first on top of it mm, seems a little steep for me. Yeah, I agree. Um, I think, you know, what with Nico Collins being wide receiver seven, I think this is relatively fair value or close to fair value, maybe a little expensive, but it's in the season. He's scoring points. This is what you're going to have to pay. I think this is close to fair value, but I probably, I think this depends on team build. I can't really, in a vacuum, honestly give you an answer either way because I just love everything involved in this trade um, on both sides. But I think, you know, if you're a team that's looking towards next year already, Roma Dunes in the first is a better move for your team than keeping Nico Collins as good as he is. Um, yeah. But if you're trying to score points, Nico Collins, obviously the move here. If I'm trying to score points, Roma Dunes, obviously not doing a lot so far. Caleb Williams hasn't been very productive. I need points. I'm, I'm willing to move Roma Dunze in a first for Nico Collins. I can go either way here. We talked about him a little bit on the last pod. That San Francisco 49ers running back, Christian McCaffrey, 
we don't know if this is going to be a short-term thing. He's put on IR, could possibly return in week six. Kyle Shanahan, he's always been a guy who really never give away too much. He's uncertain right now. So my question here is this. Christian McCaffrey may have been a guy that you bought last year for a championship push, or you bought before the season saying, hey, this is the guy I need to really bring it home for me here. And now you're without him for possibly up to six weeks, but we don't know. It could be more. That's a long time to be without one of your starting players. So that's why I brought him to the table here, because this this is a real life scenario. What do we do here? What would you think about Ramondre Stevenson and a first round pick? What do you think about that one? You know, Christian McCaffrey starting to get up there in age. He is under contract for a couple more years. They did extend him last year. Um, and we've seen how productive he can be when he's on the field because he gets the majority of the touches. But with how good Jordan Mason has looked, when CMC comes back, I don't expect him to continue to get all the touches. I mean, last year, CMC was literally getting 100% of the touches some games at the running back position. It was crazy. Uh, I don't think it's going to continue, especially with the injury that he's already sustained this year, the fact that Jordan Mason has looked so good. I don't think he's going to come back at full volume, which is fine because his efficiency is so crazy that he doesn't need that to still be an RB1 in fantasy football. That being said, I don't know when he's coming back. And Ramondre Stevenson has looked pretty good so far and is also under contract for a couple of years. He did get extended this offseason, which I love seeing a running back get extended before the rookie deal is over. I don't like seeing running backs hit the open market and go to a different team on that second contract. That doesn't always end up very well. But usually you keep a running back, pass the rookie deal, you extend them. That works a little bit better. I like where Stevenson is. I get the first on top. I, I think, you know, getting this from a team that I'm trading CMC to, hopefully that first is a little bit earlier, not near the end. Yeah. Uh, I think I actually would make this move. I think I'm starting to, you know, fade on C Mac as, as hard as that can be. We're in, like you said, we're in season. We, we need points, yep. man. This is a guy, two touchdowns on the season, not much in the way of receiving, but. Jacoby Brissett's a quarterback. It's just you play to win the game, Mike. You do. He's averaging 100 and 100.5 rushing yards per game right now. Yeah. So I expect I, those receptions to come too because he's, yeah. he's always been really good in the re- receiving game. What about straight up Jonathan Brooks? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> if good. I uh, – no, I'm not doing that one. No, it's, I'm not. I'm not doing that one either. I mean, I, I understand you're getting younger, but I haven't seen Jonathan Brooks play that. I love Jonathan Brooks. He was my running back one. Uh, you know, especially before the injury, even with the injury um, in this last class. But I haven't seen him play on the field yet, so I, I'm not willing to move Jonathan Brooks for CMC. One last one: James Cook and the surprisingly good in the NFL, Braylon Allen. Yeah, uh, just I, I think I said I wouldn't move Jonathan Brooks for CMC. I meant I wouldn't move CMC for Jonathan Brooks just to just to make that clear. Sure. Um, now this one, who was on? Who was all about James Cook in the off season? This I believe guy. we both were actually, but you were a little bit heavier on that. Than about I him a lot because yeah. the I had looked at the tea leaves from last off season and seen that the Bills were going a lot more running back heavy, a lot more run heavy with their offense. And that's what we've seen so far this season. As Khalil Shakir is the wide receiver one, his production hasn't even been that great. Um, Don Kincaid hasn't looked that great. So James Cook has been the benefactor of this new offense. And I, I love what I'm seeing from him. I think he's going to have a top five finish at the running back position this year. And Braylon Allen, a surprise for sure, especially forcing Brees Hall into a committee. Never saw that coming. I'm making this trade, Mike. Yeah, I am too. I did say Braylon Allen was kind of a buy low for me before the season. Um, The last game against Tennessee, I was watching that, and Brees Hall did get banged up a little bit. So I think that kind of forced the hand there. James Cook, he's he's still young. He's going into his contract year, CMC getting older. We need points now. These guys are going to do it for you. So, Nate, what is your next player? Yeah, this is a player that – I've been excited about, you've been excited about, we've all been excited about, but we had realistic expectations his rookie year, and a lot of people did not, and they were disappointed. But here, we get the second year. We said this was going to happen. JSN breakout coming right now. Jackson Smith and the Jig Bull. He looked good last week. He's moved past Tyrell Lockett, I think, in the pecking order. Geno Smith looks pretty good, too. Top 12 quarterback right now over there in Seattle. So Jackson Smith and the Jigba, you got to get a piece of this guy before he gets too much farther into the season because I think his stock is going to continue to rise um, as we play more football. So if we're buying now, Mike, what's it going to cost us? This first trade I got here, straight up for Travis Etienne. I kind of want to move off Etienne a little bit. 
But you I, like Tank Bigsby? <laughs> sure. <laughs> I'm a big Dearness Johnson guy. What can I say? Yeah, that's He's right. still down there, right? I think so. Yeah. Hey, go Dearness. So I move. Mm, yeah, I mean, I'll take JSN for Travis Etienne, but I feel like I could probably get a little bit more on top of JSN for Travis Etienne. So. Uh, maybe not. I think Etienne's kind of uh, – his stock's kind of falling a little bit. Yeah. So I think yeah. that we got one guy headed down, one guy headed up. We'll see what the rest of the season brings. Yeah, I would do it. I would do it as well. I'm a pretty big JSN fan. 2025 first, just a 2025 first. I mean, that's easy that's money, right? Be, yeah, easy. That's going to be the going rate. For yep. JSN. That, that's been the going rate for JSN. So, yeah. Exactly. So, you know, I'm seeing what I was hoping for. I'm willing to move a first. I'll throw a third in there, obviously, no problem uh, to go get JSN. And then, Mike, this last one, another player that we've seen kind of struggle fantasy wise, Dalton Kincaid. Yeah. So, apparently, um, they don't need to throw to anybody to win games <laughs> up there in Buffalo. But th- that Miami game was just, it's just one of those weird things. Um, I hate doing it positional scarcity with the tight end position. Uh, But right now it's looking like the move to make, we know JSN is going to be the guy we think for a while in Seattle. So I would, I would do it. And uh, Dalton Kincaid, man, five for 44 on the season. It's it's been a tough one. It has been a tough one. I think this is the one trade that I don't do. Really? Um, Now, now, and I'm I'm going to say if it's tight end premium, I'm, I'm definitely keeping Dalton Kincaid. Uh, right, I, I still think that he's going to explode here soon. But the thing is, the offense is not set up for that at this point. Um, so in a regular league, no tight end premium, this feels very, very fair to me in just whatever position you need. If you need the tight end, I'm still going after Dalton Kincaid. I'm not that scared of his early season production. If you need the wide receiver, you can put JSN right into your starting lineup. Um, so I can go either way here. I think in a vacuum, though, I'm going to lean Dalton Kincaid. I do feel that strong about his future. Let's keep plugging along. And I'm talking about Los Angeles Chargers wide receiver Quentin Johnston. What are we mm. doing here, Quentin Johnston? Look at you in this 26-3 win versus Carolina. Five catches, 51 yards, not a lot, but two touchdowns, man. He also led all Chargers wide receivers in targets, receptions, receiving yards, and touchdowns. Quentin Johnston... Maybe we were wrong to get out on him because he's been pretty productive. But Nate, what do you think about these values for good old QJ? Dallas Goddard. Dallas Goddard. You know, I actually, how is Dallas Goddard done? I haven't really heard about him. Dallas Goddard on the season, seven catches for 69 yards and no touchdowns. Yeah. Uh, you know, he's been a disappointment, you know, from uh, the past couple of years where we thought he was going to kind of move up into that top six, top eight tight end range. He just never really has. Yeah. Um, but I'm going to keep him over Quentin Johnston. Yeah, I will too for right now. In two or three weeks, that could be a could completely change. different story. Um, let's see the next one is Zamir White. I will move Zamir White for Quentin Johnston, I, th- I think, because I haven't seen much of Zamir White so far. But I'm also going to go back on myself because I heard Antonio Pierce say that, you know, their goal is to get that guy 20 carries a game. They just haven't been able to yet. Now they played the Raiders. Um, I mean, they played the Ravens uh, last week, and you know that's a tough game, so they weren't able to get him there. But Samir White has not been productive. He doesn't have the investment from draft capital. Quinn Johnson does, even though he wasn't productive his rookie year. So I will, I will lead Quinn, Quinn Johnson here. Yeah, uh, Zamir White. I'm for the best doing course. this trade as well. Uh, Zamir White averaging 3.1 yards per carry. So it's not looking great. 22 carries for 68 yards on the season. He's he looks like a big power running back who can just – you just put him in for goal line situations, short yards. That's what he's looked like so far this season, and that's not something I'm really excited about. But I don't think Alexander Madison has done anything either. I believe he has a receiving touchdown. But on the ground, nine carries for 20 yards. He does have a rushing touchdown. Rushing touchdown. And he does have a receiving touchdown. So, so far, Alexander Madison's been the better of the two backs. Yes. So. They both kind of suck so far. That's and the last the one game. is a second round pick. I'll move a second round pick for Quentin Johnston. So I don't think I'm going to move a second round pick for Quentin Johnston, but I'm moving a second round pick. I'm going after someone I trust more than Quentin Johnston. And mm-hmm. this is how I feel about Quentin Johnston. You know, we've seen the production, the two touchdowns is great. But if we look at what how he's gotten his catches so far. This is just what concerns me. With Quentin Johnston, six 
of his eight receptions so far in the season have come within nine yards or behind the line of scrimmage. Hmm. So he's being used on short yardage uh, throws that allow him to use his ability to create yards after the catch. This is how he should have been used last year as he developed a full route tree. So I feel like we're back to like rookie year Quinn Johnston. Say last year was a wash. This is really his rookie year where he's getting that involvement in the offense through these easy plays where he's getting manufactured touches basically and being able to use his legs, grow his confidence, get him into the route running. But I need to see that full route tree, that full, you know, all around wide receiver before I move my second round pick for him, because I can use my second round pick for better wide receivers than Quentin Johnson. It, you know, when we say you can move a second round pick, it's hard for me to commit to that because with a second round pick, there's a lot of players you can buy. It's not a specific value, a second round pick. There's so many different players that you could go get for a second round pick. So am I using my second round pick for one of those better players? Or am I getting a like Quentin Johnson who is pretty risky? I have no problem making that trade right now uh, in season. If I got injuries, you know, and I think he could be a producer for me. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do it. So, Nate, who do you have for us next? All right. I have one of the top quarterbacks in the league right now, Mike, and that is Baker Mayfield. He looks good. Baker Mayfield looks good. Chris Godwin looks good. Mike Evans looks good. Jalen McMillan even looks good. So I, I love what Baker's doing down there in Tampa Bay. And I unfortunately had cold feet. Uh, before the season, like a week before the season, I was offered Baker Mayfield for David Njoku. And I declined it. I needed a quarterback, but also that was my starting tight end. And I didn't really have good backup tight ends on this team because it was an orphan I took over. Otherwise, I'd always have great tight ends in my mm. bench. Um, and I got cold feet. I, I declined it. And boy, I wish I had taken the offer and ended up with Baker Mayfield instead of David Njoku. Um, yeah, but you could have picked up Colby Parkinson off I, Ravens then. Yeah, you scored like two points last week. That was great. I started them in like four different leagues. Probably more than Njoku. <laughs> well, well Njoku. Out, so, yeah. yeah. See, then definitely more than Njoku. It's true. Uh, so anyway, Baker Mayfield, what's his trade value now? Because I don't know if I can get him for just David Njoku. Two seconds. Two seconds, Mike. Yep. I'll do it. Yeah. I mean, especially if that's super flex league, the starting quarterback coming off a career year, still. I'm saying at- all of this is super flex because if I mean, if you're buying Baker Mayfield and one quarterback, it's probably not too expensive to go get him. Yeah. All right. I think two seconds. I would do that as well to go get a quarterback that I feel really good about starting in my super flex. Hopefully, I have a good quarterback one first and a throw in player. How about that, Mike? I mean, you think about it. You're you're typically paying at least a first for mm-hmm. a starting quarterback and a super flex, um, and then throw in players are usually so, like a Jalen Hyatt or something like that. So, an Alexander Madison could be considered yep. a throw in player. So, yeah, I'm fine with that as well. I would also do that. Um, you know, con- assuming my first round pick is going to be a late first round pick, I'm a con- competing team. And then Mike, little uh, segue here, but uh, how about J- Jameson Williams or Baker Mayfield? Yeah, I'm going to do that as well. And again, positional scarcity, it's easier to find good wide receivers than it is to find really good quarterbacks. True. And if this is straight up, I'm definitely going to do that, even though, like you said, we'll be talking about Jameson Williams here in a minute. I would make the trade as well. I love what I'm seeing from Baker Mayfield. And like you said, you know, it's hard to find a good starting quarterback, especially these days. It is difficult. So I'll take Baker Mayfield. He's got the contract. He's got the stats right now. He's playing with swagger, and that's when Baker Mayfield plays best. So, Mike. Tell me about Jamison Williams, though. So let's talk about Jamison Williams because he's been doing a little bit better this season than I think either of us predicted he yeah. was going to do. Uh, let's talk about he's why he's 63 overall and keep direct cut. Why does he have 28 right now? So last week in a 16 to 20 loss to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, Baker Mayfield's team, five for 79 and zero. Is he becoming what we thought he could be? This could be a very valuable second or third receiving option in an offense that includes. Amon Ross St. Brown and Sam Laporta, who's been a bit of a disappointment so far this year, but it's still early. I think Laporta is going to turn it around on the season, 10 catches, 200 yards. So he's averaging 20 yards of reception, which is the type of player that we knew he could be big receiving guy. Maybe he wouldn't have the best volume. He does have one touchdown tying his total for his rookie season, but um, looking good so far. Let's talk about the cost here, Nate. Matthew Stafford is one of them. All right. Well, with all the injuries to Matthew Stafford's wide receivers, I think I'll go with uh, Jamison Williams in this situation. Before I say yes to that, I would try to 
pulled Matthew Stafford out there and see if I could find someone a little more consistent than Jamison Williams. Um, that being said, I don't hate it. What about Tank Dell? I'm going to have to stick with Tank Dell. I know his production has not been as good as Jamison Williams. Um, this is a little bit of me holding on to priors, I guess. Um, but let's remember, you know, both these guys have other wide receivers they're competing with. You know, Amir Ross St. Brown, he does have more targets than Jamison Williams, but Jamison Williams does still have 20 targets. Jamison Williams actually has the fifth most targets in the NFL so far, which Crazy. kind of blows my mind. Absolutely. Um, yeah, this is this is getting closer day by day, I will say, but I still do really believe in Tank Dale. Um, and, you know, once Stefan Diggs is out of there after this year, it's him and Nico with CJ Stroud. That sounds really good to me. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with Tank Dell as well. I just like I trust him more overall. Uh, and the last one, Derrick Henry. Yeah, this one uh, feels pretty fair, uh, depending on what your your goal is for the season. If you need a running back, if you need a wide receiver, because I know Derrick Henry has been a little disappointing so far through two games. I do think that this Ravens offense will figure it out. I don't know when because unfortunately they have a couple of tough games coming up. Um, they got the Cowboys this week. Um, they do play the Bengals in a couple of weeks. Um, so they. They have a, the next three games I know are against pretty good teams. So I don't know when they're going to quite figure out this offense, but when they do, I do think Derrick Henry is going to be really good. But in a vacuum, I'm going to go with Jamison Williams because he's younger, the wide receiver. You can count on him. And like I said, fifth in targets right now in the NFL. I mean, I love chasing volume. Yeah. I mean, I think I'm going to stick with Derrick Henry here. Touchdown in both games. And, you know, I just... He's Derrick Henry's a starting running back. Jameson Williams is maybe your wide receiver three, depending on how your team is made up. So I'm going to stick with Derrick Henry there. I think, that's right. I think you can go either way. Yeah, I, that's one of those two where it's kind of a toss up. I prefer Derrick Henry slightly. It's just harder to find a good, healthy starting running back. It is.